It should be a lopsided fight. A multinational coalition boasting the might of the US Navy, a British destroyer and the capabilities of Western allies, including Australia. Lined up against the Houthis of Yemen, a low-tech tribal army forged in the badlands of the Southern Arabian Peninsula. Somehow, the Houthis have managed to have an outsized impact on the global shipping trade. The Houthi strikes in the Red Sea began in October, soon after the Hamas attack on Israel. The Houthis have so far hijacked a cargo ship and launched multiple missile and drone strikes at commercial and military vessels. In the most recent attack, overnight, a Houthi missile hit a US-owned container ship. They are a religious group, they are very dogmatic group, so it's part of their ideology. It's part of their ideology to be anti-America, anti-Israel. It's part of their slogan. They're also closely aligned with Iran and it's in uh, Iran's best interests to exact a, um, a, a cost against Israel on as many fronts as is possible without themselves becoming decisively engaged. The Houthis missiles and drones come from its Shia Muslim ally, Iran. But a fight with the US and Israel doesn't merely serve Iran's interests. There's an argument to be made that uh, they want um, the status of being able to play out uh, on a much bigger stage their, their rhetoric about being anti-Israeli and anti-US rather than just speaking about it, we're actually doing it. Fighting for the Palestinians plays well in the Arab world and distracts from more complex tasks like running a country devastated by war where 80% of its 32 million people needed humanitarian assistance last year. There are also could be other pragmatic reasons, for example, uh, diverting the attention of the people inside Yemen from the difficult economic conditions because of their bad governance and co corruption. The crisis in the Red Sea is affecting global shipping. It's the route to the Suez Canal, the maritime link between Asia and Europe. Most container ships are now taking the long way around Africa via the Cape of Good Hope. The sailing time between Asia and Europe uh, is increased about 10 days, or in other words, uh, about 30%. And it is causing significant delays in the delivery of goods. Uh, products and also components. For example, some factories like Tesla in Germany had to pause their manufacturing because of the delays in the components. But the effective closure of the Red Sea to container ships may not have a big impact on prices, says logistics expert Dr. Gokche Polchi. Freight charges have spiked, but they're still only about a quarter of the price charged during COVID. The sea freight on the price of a consumer product is quite low. It's as low as 1% for many products. And also, uh, most uh, retailers uh, are not affected by the uh, you know, spot freight increases because they are signing annual contracts with the container lines and the shipping companies. But the throttling of commercial shipping in the Red Sea is untenable. I said that the Houthi action is unacceptable, it is illegal, it is dangerous, it could well result in the severe loss of life and the sinking of ships, and it has to stop. Australia was asked to provide a ship and sent military personnel instead. 
That's a fair call, says Roger Shanahan, a Middle East analyst and former Australian Army officer. We had a small, uh, relatively small economic interest in it compared to, say, the Europeans or the Chinese who have massive economic interests in the Red Sea. So, again, you don't necessarily want to see an Australian ship out there protecting European Chinese trade when the Europeans uh, really should be doing that. But stopping all attacks on ships may prove difficult. Saudi Arabia fought a long war with the Houthis with negligible impact. The Saudis strike them like more than eight years and nothing happens, just they become stronger, military stronger. There's no doubt they're an extremely uh, tough adversary uh, on the land. Uh, they know the land, uh, they can uh, work with very little logistical uh, backup and they're very tough fighters. Because they have that experience how to deal with this, this strikes, they know how to move their weapons from place to place, how to avoid these strikes to harm their military capabilities that much. So I don't think this will, will affect them. While the war in Gaza continues, there's also a heightened risk of a bigger regional conflict involving Iran. There's always the possibility that there's overreach and that you either target a ship that you didn't mean to target or you get a lucky strike on a US or a UK naval vessel um, that requires a much greater response. So yes, these are always things that uh, can happen, but I think also the US um, and their allies are pretty well aware of um, the traps in play in getting further engaged into uh, Yemen and so they'll be very careful and measured in their responses.